Madam Speaker, I rise to make a statement concerning two recent reports which were released by the Office of the Auditor General entitled Financial and Performance Reporting, Ministries, Portfolios, and Offices for the years ending 30th June 2011 and 2012, and Financial and Performance Reporting, Statutory Authorities and Government Companies for the year ending 30th June 2012. Madam Speaker, the reports summarize the results of the Auditor General's examination of the financial statements of ministries, portfolios, and offices of central government for the fiscal year ending 30th June fiscal years ending 30th June 2011 and 2012 and with respect to statutory authorities and government companies for the year fiscal year ending 30th June 2012. Madam Speaker, I will not go into significant detail on the findings of the two reports except to say that the combined expenses for the Ministry of District Administration works lands and agriculture, and the Ministry of Finance, Tourism, and Development for the two fiscal years ending 30th June 2011 and 2012 are 269.7 million CI dollars. Madam Speaker, I want to inform the public of the government's achievements in improving its financial reporting and accountability as that really is the essence of the reports, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we are making significant improvements. And based on the two Auditor General's reports, out of the 14 agencies that were audited in 2011 for the 2010-2011 fiscal year, 85% of those agencies, Madam Speaker, received qualified and unqualified audit opinions. All except for one of these 12 agencies have now tabled their financial statements in the Legislative Assembly, thereby making the reports open for public scrutiny. This is indicated on page 28 of the report of the Central Government's Ministries, Portfolios and Offices. And out of the 40 agencies that were audited in 2011-2012 fiscal year, 92% received qualified and unqualified audit opinions. 26 of the 40 agencies have now tabled their financial statements in the Legislative Assembly, thereby making the reports available to the public for their scrutiny. Again, this is indicated on page 28 of the report of the central government's ministries, portfolios, and offices. And at page 31 of the report with respect to statutory authorities and government companies. The robustness of the consolidated financial statements for the entire public sector, Madam Speaker, is dependent upon the quality of the information contained in the financial statements of the individual ministries, portfolios, offices, statutory authorities, and government companies. If an individual ministry, portfolio, office, statutory authority, or government company is a significant agency within the entire public sector, and that agency receives a disclaimer of opinion or an adverse opinion from the Auditor General. Then, Madam Speaker, the consolidated financial statements of the entire public sector will consequently receive a disclaimer of opinion or adverse opinion of the Auditor General. 
Therefore, it is important that each agency within the entire public sector improve the quality of information in its financial statements so that the consolidated financial statements of the entire, pu entire public sector will not receive a disclaimer of opinion or even an adverse opinion from the Auditor General's office in future. Madam Speaker, there are challenging times ahead, but a solution is being developed. And I'm not going to stand here and say that the government's finances are perfect, Madam Speaker, because we know that would be far from the truth. But the government acknowledges that it, is, it still has significant work to do in order to restore timely financial accountability. It is a position that the current government inherited, but nonetheless, Madam Speaker, we are trying to improve public accountability because that is what we campaigned on, or one of the, matter, one of the issues on which we campaigned. On the 20th of August, 2014, the Ministry of Finance met with the Auditor General to discuss the outstanding audit issues that were continuing to cause the audit qualifications at both the entity and the consolidated financial statements for the public sector. Given that the Auditor General's report on the financial and performance reporting for the years ending 30th June 2011 and 2012 are based on periods that are two to three years past, some of these audit findings have already been addressed and improvements have been made, Madam Speaker. The following audit issues are those that are currently hindering the government from moving from a disclaimer of opinion on its consolidated financial statements for the entire public sector to an improved qualified opinion, and Madam Speaker, hopefully, eventually, an unqualified audit opinion. Number one, lack of management representation. Madam Speaker, the Auditor General is not satisfied and does not have the assurance from the chief officers and chief financial officers within each ministry, portfolio, and office that revenues, receivables, expenses, liabilities, and other balances recorded within the financial statements are complete, accurate, and fairly represented or fairly presented. Therefore, the Auditor General has been unable to obtain sufficient, appropriate audit evidence to determine the reasonableness of the reported balances. To address the issue of qualification following the August 20th meeting, Madam Speaker, between the Auditor General and the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Finance is developing a standardized submission package or assurance framework, which will enable the chief officers and chief, finan chief financial officers to assert that the balances that they are reporting are fairly presented and that appropriate documentation to support the timely audit of financial statements will be provided to the Auditor General. Number two, lack of internal controls. The lack of segregation of duties and the lack of monitoring and review by management are some of the key internal controls that still need improvement across the government, Madam Speaker. The government entities are now focusing on improving their systems of internal controls to ensure the effectiveness and efficiency of operations, the safeguard of assets, the reliability of information in financial reports, and the compliance of activities with laws and regulations. The government, Madam Speaker, is currently developing an improved internal control framework that will be applied across the entire public sector. Number three, post-retirement health care liability. Madam Speaker, the government is obligated to provide post-retirement health care benefits to current pensioners, seamen and veterans, and future retirees. 
an independent valuation of the post-retirement health care costs obligations for the period covered by the report on central government was not carried out, Madam Speaker. And as a result, the Auditor General has been unable to determine the extent of the obligation to the government. The government has recently received and is currently giving consideration to the valuation of the post-retirement health care liability. The post-retirement health care liability, Madam Speaker, is derived by computing the value of health care costs which will be received by current pensioners, seamen, veterans, and future retirees over the period of their life expectancy, but discounted back to the date of the valuation report. Hence, this is a series of amounts that will be paid yearly during their life expectancy, Madam Speaker. However, that total amount is discounted and represented at today's value. It is very important that the public understands that the post-retirement health care liability figure that is given is not an amount that the government is obligated to pay immediately or within, the short, within a short period of time. In fact, as part of its annual budget, the government budgets for and pays on an ongoing and pays ongoing post-retirement health care costs. Madam Speaker, and for clarity, that is reflected within each ministry and portfolio's annual budget. Madam Speaker, to illustrate the point, if a family has a significant amount of money in their savings account, and they also have a mortgage of several hundred thousand dollars. The mortgage is a liability of the family, but it is not a liability that needs to be repaid immediately or within a short time frame. Similarly, the government is not expected to pay for the entire amount of the post-retirement health care liability in the immediate future. It is spread over approximately 20 years. In addition, Madam Speaker, the Cayman Islands government is currently preparing legislation that will increase the retirement age for the public sector and the private sector from 65 up to six, from 60 years up to 65 years. And by doing so, will significantly reduce the post-retirement health care liability amount since the difference in years between retirement and life expectancy will be reduced by that five-year period. Number four, valuation of property, plant, and equipment. Madam Speaker, the government carried out a revaluation of its lands, buildings, infrastructure, and leasehold improvements in July 2013. However, the Auditor General has reported that the valuation report needs to be further broken down to show the, compa the compartmentalized assets. As such, the Auditor General is still not able to evaluate the reasonableness of the carrying amount of land and other assets, and bu land, buildings, and any associated depreciation or impairment entries recorded in, within the financial statements. Madam Speaker, the government will ensure that future valuations are prepared in the required format as required by the Auditor General. It should also be noted, Madam Speaker, that there have been important personnel changes in the two ministries that are the primary focus of the report. In 2012, new chief officers were appointed to the ministries in question, along with new chief financial officers in 2013 and 14. The government expects that the quality of those two ministries' financial statements will improve, Madam Speaker, as a result of the personnel changes. The government intends to bring to the Legislative Assembly before the end of the fiscal year, Madam Speaker, 
a bill to amend the public management and finance law to address some of the concerns. Madam Speaker, with the implementation of the above measures, it was agreed with the Auditor General that the government could reasonably expect to receive a qualified opinion on its 2013-14 consolidated financial statements for the entire public sector, as we are trying and hopefully would have by that time made all of the necessary changes, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the Auditor General has committed to issuing the opinion thereon by 30th June 2015. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, the government has, since the time period covered by these two audit office reports, improved the timeliness and quality of its financial reporting and accountability. The government is committed to improving the financial management systems which will result in the production of financial statements that increasingly receive unqualified opinions, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, in closing, the, audit, the Auditor General's reports can be found on the website of the Office of the Auditor General, and I encourage the public to take time to read and educate themselves on the issues at hand. Thank you, Madam Speaker.